This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro, and I'm going to do something a little bit different today because I want to talk about, a, I've had some questions related to these trades and stocks like SMCI and NVIDIA, and I've done videos on how to catch those type of trades using the ADX patterns that I talk about. But I don't think your focus should be on that. And I, I, it, there, there are stages of trading. If you're going to reach one level, um, bef you have to reach one level before you go to the next. And then you have to sustain that level for a while. And then you can go to the final stage. So let me just walk you through um, how I think this works. Um, also, just to let you know, if you have an interest in uh, learning more about some of these techniques using uh, multiple time frame analysis, I would suggest starting with the book. Um, my courses are available right now uh, for lifetime access. I've changed the pricing on them. You can go to rablestockresearch.com to find out all that information. Okay, let's start, and I just want to talk about the process, what process this is going to be. You're going to crawl first, okay? A lot of guys want to go straight to running, and that's why the people who have the videos that, that say 100% accuracy when, you know, make a huge amount of money in a short period of time, uh, make, you know, millions of dollars in, in this year and all that stuff, those are the guys getting all the views, all right? And, you know, I've got my dinky little... Um, channel here, but I, I can tell you that this is the process that it's going to take. And I'm, I, most of my uh, guys that I've worked with one-on-one -on -one realize that I'm telling them it is going to take them time. You're not going to jump on this and get in and, and be incredibly successful. Not if you want to be sustained, you want to have a sustainable approach um, that's going to work. So the crawl stage, let's just start and, and talk a little bit about, um, what the crawl stage means, all right? And this is where you actually have the ability not to just put on a single positive trade. Like anybody can put on a single trade and make money, anybody. You can flip a coin, you could buy Microsoft tomorrow and it might be up. In fact, there's a pretty high probability to be up these days and then sell it. And then that doesn't make you profitable in any way straight. Uh, that doesn't even qualify you for the crawl stage. The crawl stage is where you have an approach that you're using in the market and you go and identify stocks that are meeting that criteria and you're able to sustain gains over a period of time. Now, if I were to draw a line right here, and let's just say that's for the month, all right? Let's say that's a monthly period. So these are all the trades for the month. Well, this is not ideal because you've, you've made money and then you've given it all back in that period. And it might be actually make more sense over a quarterly period, right? So let's say this is over the course of a quarter. If you're doing like weekly and daily trades and you're making money, but then you're giving it all back, all right? This is the crawl stage because you're going through sustainable periods where you make money. You might, be, you might make money for like six weeks straight and then give it all back during the course of the day. Now, anyone who's day traded would recognize that, let's say this is a week, all right? What you end up doing is you make money for four days. You're doing really, really well. And then you have one day that just crushes you and you, t and you give back all of your gains and sometimes you actually lose for the week even though you had a really good period for four straight days and then you have one bad day and it gives it all back, all right? So that's the crawl stage. That's where you actually have a pretty decent idea how to enter and exit, um, but you haven't learned the process of making a consistent profit. Let's go to the walk stage. Then the walk stage is where we're now in that, during that period, that same accounting period, we actually make money. Now, we don't make a killing, you know, we, 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 but we, we make a successful, we have a successful period and we don't give back too much. So we're, we're talking about, and then let's say this is another period right here. And over the, over the course, let's say this is a, a quarterly pattern, a quarterly time frame here, and then another quarterly time frame here. And so for the quarter, 
you make money. And then for the next quarter, again, look, here's where you start the quarter and here's where you end the quarter. You're, you're ending on a profitable, in a profitable way. You might be up for the quarter. You might only be up 1%, all right? But you're making money consistently. That's the key is consistency in your profits. And that's actually a lot more important than the amount. You need to be consistent. So again, if you're a day trader and you're trying to be consistent, you don't care how much you make for the week, but you want to make money every single week. If you're trying to make money on a weekly daily combo, um, or let's actually go to the next step. So we've got a weekly time frame if you're a day trader, if a monthly time frame if you're a swing trader. That's the time frame you want to look and see. Am I profitable, consistently profitable over the course of a month, month to month, if I'm a swing trader? I want to be profitable. You might not make money every week. All right. But over the course of each month, you should be making money if you're a swing trader. All right. And that's be that would be like in using my approach, it would be like using a, um, uh, a weekly, I mean, a daily and an hourly. All right. Now, if we jump up another time frame from um, daily hourly, we go to weekly daily. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to use a quarterly time frame. All right. You want to you want to be profitable by the quarter if you're using weekly daily. So you got to go back. You got to do an accounting this way and, and keep track and say, OK, this quarter st started January 1st, ends March 31st. I've got to I've got to be profitable for that period. All right. I'm, I'm taking only weekly daily trades. All right. So you want to think this way by the quarter. And there's a whole reason for this because we want to be consistent this way. Now, if you can do that, th you have to do this first and you can't walk until you crawl. You have to crawl first. That means you have to have periods where you make money. Even if you're giving it back, you have to have a, a period. It has to be, uh, again, if like if I'm trading um, inner day and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a day trader and I'm trying to make money over the course of the week, I need to make money over like a three day period. And then if I give it back, I give it back. But if I, if I make money one day and lose money the next, make money the next day, lose money the next, that's not really what I would consider the crawl stage. That's like getting lucky. All right. You should be able to get to the point where you can make money over several days in a row and then you end up giving it back because you go off the handle, you go on tilt. If you understand uh, the parlance of, uh, of gambling, uh, poker or anything like that, you, you go on tilt and you just keep betting even though you're, you're losing and you give all, all your uh, money back. All right. That's the crawl stage is where you have that ability. The walk stage is where you actually have the ability to be consistent through that period and you don't give it all back. All right. You're, you're making money. Now, you might not be making a killing, but you're you're so on a week. On, again, if you're day trading and you're trying to make money for the week, you're profitable for the week. Now, some weeks it might just be a couple bucks. You might only make, you know, a hundred dollars for the week, but you're profitable. And then the next week, maybe it's a lot better. So you think about it like I can see, say this is one time frame. And then let's say this is another time frame. Right. And then by the other, let's just actually that's probably not a good example because this isn't really consistent. Well, I guess maybe by the end you did make money a little bit. You were down and then you came back. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it's not going to be consistent. It's not like you're going to make the same amount each week, but you're trying to be consistent in terms of being profitable each week. All right. Once you've reached those two stages, then you can go to the run stage. Now, I wouldn't go and think about this run stage until I've been profitable on the walk stage through three or four time periods in a row, accounting periods in a row. So if I'm a weekly, daily trader, I almost want to go a whole year trying to be consistent first before I try and enter this run stage because you are going to take things a little bit differently when you hit the run stage. You're going to handle things a little bit differently. And this is what we're trying to do. So when we get to the run stage, you have, um, you're, you're making money, all right, and so this is the end of the quarter, and I'm trading weekly, daily, all right? I'm just going to use this as an example. So uh, I've started the quarter, and I'm kind of not doing a whole lot, but then I start to make a little bit of money. Now I have made profits that's pretty good for the quarter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take extra risk at this point. Now I'm not going to give back what I've made for the month, but let's say I'm up 3% so far for the quarter, 
All right, I'm up 3%, and I want to see if I can turn it into a monster quarter. What you could do is you could play some options a little bit more aggressively, but you're not going to do it to the point where you give back all your gains. You still have to make money for the quarter. All right, so if you're up 3%, you might risk 1.5%. You might risk half of your gains or 2% if you want to be aggressive and see if you can't turn it into a really, really huge, huge quarter. All right. And what you're going to end up doing is taking bigger risk per trade or maybe, again, like I say, playing some options that are that are uh, uh, maybe out of the monies. You're trying to make some big gains there at the end. So let's say you're through two months. You've made it through two months for the quarter. All right. You got one month left. You're up three percent and you want to and you might only want to risk one one percent. But you take that one percent and you put it in, in a really aggressive way. You try and make some really substantial gains in that last month taking uh, extra risk and again it could be in an option trade it could be um, playing something uh, very aggressively with a maybe um, you know if you normally risk like one percent of equity on a trade you you risk two or two and a half or something like that and you try and catch one big you know big move right and you might put more in an individual stock or something like that. Now, you got to be careful, especially around any, even if it's an earnings period. It doesn't have to be an earnings time frame for your stock. But if any stock in your group is going to announce earnings, you got to be very careful about having a big position like that. But there's a lot of different ways where you can be aggressive with the extra money that you've made. And then if it doesn't work and you blow that 1%, you lose that 1%, you're still up 2% for the time period. So you, you can do that. You could split it up. You could say, I'm going to take the 1% and I'm going to see, I'm going to take three trades with it. All right. And I'm going to see if I can't make some really blowout, put, put on a couple like three different option trades that are really pretty aggressive, but you think you have a shot at uh, catching some big, big wins. And again, turn it from a 3% month to a 6%. I'm not a month, a 3% quarter to a 6% quarter. So hopefully this makes sense. You want to be, and, and then you can't, so you don't, again, make sure you understand. You don't go from crawl to walk. I mean, you're trying to go from crawl to walk as soon as possible, but you can't go to the run stage until you've had a period of consistent profitability inside your zone. So you might not be making money for the quarter, but you've had period where at least for the, for at least a month, maybe six weeks during that quarter, you were making money consistently week in, week out, all right? If you're not doing that, then you really can't go to the walk stage, all right? And then you can't go from the walk stage to the run stage until you've had a consistent period of two to three time periods where you've been con where you've consistently made money. Once you've done that, then you can go to the next step. And I think if you think this way and you understand the process that it takes to go from one step to the next, um, it's, it's, I think what you're going to end up doing is number one, being really, really good with your logs. You got to keep good logs. You got to know, and you also got to know your time period of what you're trading and what your accounting period is. All right. People uh, lose sight of that and it just all gets meshed together. If you're a day trader, use a weekly time frame. Uh, you want to be profitable each week. If, uh, if you're a swing trader, you want to be profitable every month. If you're a uh, weekly, daily, intermediate term uh, trader, you're, you want to be profitable every quarter. And if you're a longer term trader using monthly, weekly type strategies, you want to be profitable every year. All right. Uh, so that use these ideas to your advantage and see if you can't put it to use.